Hello everyone. Uh, greetings from Tokyo. My name is Yoichi Nagata, photographer from Japan. Uh, thank you for taking time to meet me today. Unfortunately, uh, I can't show my work in person, but I'd like to present a slideshow of my work. Uh, before the slideshow, uh, let me tell you a little story about my work and how it related to fashion. Uh, the work present here called Star of the Stars, Fuku Fuku Boshi in Japanese. Uh, and it documents a uh, Japanese subcultural fashion. Uh, the photos were taken between 2005 and 2015. Uh, Japanese subculture uh, probably best known for girl, uh, gothic lolita, uh, maids and cosplay. But the events I mainly photographed were the event where people from various categories gathered. The first time I went to one of these club events, the fashion I saw was something I had never seen before. I felt strongly that I had to document this. That was the beginning of this work. I asked the club event organizer to set up a small space inside the event venue where I set up a black backdrop. The event usually ran from midnight to dawn. The space was so small that I could not pull the camera back and get a good enough distance. So the lens I used was always wide zoom lens. I photographed between 20 and 90 people a night and in the end I have taken more than 1,000 portraits. Now I'd like to show you some photos and video of shooting scene. Their fashion doesn't seem to be only about how cool they look, and sometimes they may even look grotesque. Some of them have tattoos, piercing, split tongues, or other body modifications, which gives a slightly scary impression. But when I spoke to them, I also noticed that despite their outward appearance, Many of them have good manners, calm attitude, or a delicate personality. Their professions also vary, such as IT worker, engineer, office clerk, nurse, doctor, dog groomer, SM club queen, web designer, fashion designer, child care worker, art school student, so on and so on. Their fashion is not about copying anything, but they each come up with their own original style and often make their own clothes by hand. Why are they dressed in this type of fashion? I'd like to start with a fundamental question of fashion and how outer appearance and inner character are related to each other in human beings. It's very important for people to know how they look on the outside. Originating as naked apes, humans have acquired a privilege that no other animal has, the ability to manipulate their appearance at will. Red ochre, which may have been used for body art, human body decoration, was found in the Plombos Caves in South Africa 
Red ochre is still used as an ingredient in lipstick. Anthropologists estimate that humans have been using the pigment red ochre for body painting since approximately 280,000 years ago. Field work studying contemporary hunter gatherers also show that body painting was an important factor. It may have had a magical meaning for successful hunting. Beads made of shells were found in 2004 in the Brombos Caves in South Africa and were determined to be about 75,000 years old. It is thought that the perforated shells were joined together to form a necklace. A person today would wear accessories of his or her own choice, but it is said that ancient people wore shell necklaces as gifts from their peers. People who are kind and generous were given necklaces as gifts by others. Therefore, People who wore a lot of necklaces appeared as nice and kind people. Since sharing was a basic survival strategy in primitive symbiotic societies, it seemed that people who wore a lot of necklaces were valued by their peers. In subsequent human history, Fashion has become an expression of a person's profession and status. August Sanders' portraits of people in various professions illustrate this. His work is known as typology. In the Rococo period, the fashion went beyond the original function of fashion and became over decorated. A major turning point in the history of fashion was in the 1960s when a new fashion represented by the miniskirt appeared along with the birth of pop culture and the hippie star in America. From this point onwards, the role of fashion was to express people's feelings and thoughts. What do you think about the future of fashion? Let's look at Barrington J. Bailey's sci fi novel, The Garment of KM. Depicted in this novel is a world in which clothing itself strongly dominates human emotions. Clothing has become an absolute art form and is respected as an expression of human philosophy. In the end, the clothes and the plant fibers become conscious. And come to dominate mankind. In the novel, an elegantly dressed woman wore a headdress decorated with ships and sails. This extreme hairstyle was called the ship hair in the Rococo period, which I showed earlier, and I was surprised to see a woman whom I photographed with similar hair decorations. Kai Iruma. Who contributed an interesting essay to Star of the Stars photo book has a very interesting perspective. Looking at the fashion of the people in Star of the Stars, Irma says that their fashions are possessed by the souls of the dead. I'd like to quote his text, Message from the Night. I also believe that what these people express is not themselves. Surely it is the emotion of the dead they are decking themselves out with. Legion of the dead wriggles their way through big cities addressing the living, but the people who live in the daytime don't lend their ears to their gloomy grief and anger or their hesitant aspiration for the future. The wishes of the dead were up together with sexual urges from the realm of their Depressed emotions. It is always only a handful of people who are sensitive to these things and dress accordingly. The creatures of the night. Everybody's mood changes when putting on a costume. 
you become bright and happy or perhaps sad instead. But just like we wear clothes, we actually put on life, feelings, and thoughts as well. Not to mention makeup, through dyes and fibers, the desires of the dead so keen to possess us. What do you think I'm pulling your leg? Through visible garment, the dead attract invisible thoughts and emotions, even life. I don't know who the emotion they are wearing belong to. Maybe victims of air raids or earthquakes or those who have lost their lives to the power of the state or common crime. But when those emotions are expressed, they become themselves. Captured in photographs, they become gods of the darkness, stars in the midnight sky. It's surprising that the spiritual, invisible world has crept into fashion. Well, let's compare the iconography of Asian gods with the portraits of Star of the Stars here. This shows Landa, a witch said to live in the forest of Bali in Indonesia. She certainly looks grotesque, but in a way that's similar to how many of my subjects intentionally emphasize looking more grotesque than cool in their fashions. This is the Hindu god Vishnu. Here we have Shurinatji, who is a manifestation of Krishna. His body is encrusted with jewels and precious metals. He also has lotus flowers surrounding him. The god Shiva has a third eye in his forehead, which some of the club goers also use as a motif in their makeup. Here the third eye on another figure, the goddess Kali. Here's Indola. If you look closely, you can see the many eyes staring out from his arms and chest. Why do their fashions even feature visual like Asian gods when their fashion is supposed to be playful? Here is a view of Kohei Sugiura, a leading Japanese researcher and graphic designer of Asian iconography. A few quotes from his book, Marge Subjective Asia. Sugiura observes that Mato, one of the Japanese words for to wear, is synonymous with entering a state of possession where one takes on the very soul of what one has attired around one's body. For example, tachiki, standing tree, designs on Japanese kimono depict cherry, plum, or other trees growing upward from hem to shoulder and spreading their branches and flowers out wide across the entire garment. By wrapping her body in this kimono, with its layer of blossoms, a woman in effect turns into a tree herself. According to Sugiura, the people of old were not very attached to their human status and instead were much more drawn to the idea of taking on some other form of existence, such as that of blossoming tree. Through this symbolic act of transformation, they thought to take on to themselves the latent energies of life and death pulsing within that tree. This kind of thinking has roots in the Asian belief that one's life is a gift from one's ancestor and from the various spirits residing in nature. When the self is acknowledged to be insignificant, then it becomes much easier for people 
to want to let themselves go and join the natural spirit world in the form of a cherry or a plum tree. Sugiura also points to the implication of the Japanese language, which some linguists consider to be subjectless. In Japanese, the subject or self is left empty, open to entry by anyone or anything else. Perhaps he muses, that's why the people of this land once found it so easy to relinquish their hearts to the swirling cherry blossoms. Such was the imagination they possessed before it was lost by the advent of modernization. Indeed, Sugiura notes, for a long time, all people in Asia lived by the awareness that they stand at the end of a distant chain connecting them to all previous life on earth. They value the ability to sense the weight of those countless, nameless others who had lived and died before them, and to whom they owed their own existence. By changing fashion, you can transform yourself into anything, and there is room for the unseen world of spirits to enter. This is the kind of mind that lurks within the people of the East. I now think this is probably why I first felt the urge to document the people in Star of the Stars. As I can show you my works in person, I would like to show you a few of my past exhibitions. This is an exhibition at the Center for Fine Art Photography in USA. This is the exhibition at Jiro Miura Gallery in Japan. This is the exhibition at Mikeko Gallery in Germany. This is the exhibition at Breda Photo International Festival in Netherlands. This is a group photo book show at Davis Alton Gallery and Griffin Museum of Photography in USA. Thank you for listening. Now please enjoy the slideshow of the Star of the Stars.